Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry Erasmus of Bonsai Tree. Today I'm going to be working on this uh, Japanese black pine, which uh, was imported about a year ago. And um, I'm just doing some seasonal work on it. And that is going to involve the thinning of some of the needles, which are in areas or areas that are a little bit dense uh, to try and give a more even distribution of needles. Uh, the purpose of that or the importance of that rather is that in spring when you have sap flowing to the various parts of the tree um, that sap or the flow of the sap is determined by the amount of needles that you have in each of those areas so the idea would be to evenly distribute the, the needles so that you get an even distribution of sap flow of course. Um, so then uh, it's also it's a fairly dense uh, tree uh, already and uh, so I'll just be going through the tree and looking for areas that are um, maybe dead twigs, um, inner uh, buds that have died, um, or alternative, or and as well areas which are a little bit too congested. If you have more than two uh, branches or branchlets coming out of a single point of origin, of course, or as an example, um, that would be thinned out. And then uh, just overall uh, looking at the tree, studying the trees see where the weak areas problems that might be. I do see that some of the needles are showing a little bit of uh, fungal infection. I have already sprayed the tree for that. Um, of course I caught it too late um, but um, the new needles that did come out are not showing any signs of that um, so I'm not too concerned. I believe the spring uh, development will also be perfect um, but yeah just uh, inspecting the tree and just giving I'll also be looking at uh, treating the moss on the trunk um, because you don't want moss on a black pine um, up the side of the black pine trunk because of course it's going to cause that bark to that make the trees so desirable and uh, contributes to its value it's uh, going to rot that bark so we're going to or I'm going to treat that with uh, a dilution of vinegar I spray that on it's the only way really that you can kill that moss you can't use uh, water uh, high pressure water or anything because of course you'll you'll remove the bark um, if you do that um, so I'll be spraying the tree uh, with vinegar as well and uh, that is about it so this is not going to to be a long uh, a talk or long demonstration. It's uh, really just a very routine uh, maintenance step that's required on two needle pines. So this, what I'm doing now would be would it would apply not only to Japanese black pine, it would also apply to Japanese red pine because they're both two needle uh, double flush or multi flush pines. So you can do the same work on both of those. So the tools that I'm going to be using for this work is a pair of pine tweezers. Uh, the difference between pine tweezers, if you're not aware of it, is the raised area where the um, of the teeth um, that grasp the needles, and this makes all the difference between uh, these um, tweezers and normal tweezers because normal tweezers get. Uh, uh, the needles get stuck in sort of the shaft of the of the of the tool itself, um, but with the pronounced or raised uh, needles, uh, sorry, teeth uh, of the pine twe pine needle tweezers, um, you can avoid that problem. And then also for uh, for cutting out anything, I'm going to be using a pair of trimming scissors. Um, so always a good idea to start working at the top of the tree so that you're essentially cleaning the tree as you work to the bottom of it and you want to try and um, I'm using a green tea uh, plus table. Um, I love working on them because it gives me a maximum uh, or a lot of versatility in terms of the height that I can adjust uh, my trees at because I'm working with a small shohin as well as much larger trees and um, so it allows me a lot of uh, vertical height to play with. So you want to work at a comfortable height you do, um, if you're sitting above the tree or you certainly don't want to be sitting with the tree on your eye level because your arms are going to get quite tired if you if you're working at this height so get yourself a comfortable space um, uh, to do this work and then you can dive in I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, clean up this branch uh, so that you can get a sense of what um, we're trying to achieve so I'm removing 
um, any needles growing from the bottom of branches and from the croc uh, the um, the crotches um, or the, the forking of the branches and then I'm also going to reduce the amount of new needles that I have. Uh, so you can, we obviously talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, amount of needles it's pairs of needles so we don't count one, two um, in obviously in every with the uh, two needle pines which are Japanese black pines and red pines there's two needles at every uh, in every cluster. So we talk about five pairs or six pairs or ten pairs of needles. Um, we don't talk about individual needles. So I'm going to reduce uh, this pine down to about in the apical area, which is always going to be the, 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 the strongest part of the tree. I will reduce that to say uh, five pairs or six, let's say six pairs of needles and um, seeing as this tree is still, uh, we don't want to make it because the more you reduce the needles or to the fewer needles that you have left, the, the, the less or that much um, the sap flow is reduced by that much. So you don't want to make it too weak. Um, and, and this comes down to experience and how healthy the tree is, your growing conditions, but you're trying to control uh, the, the candle development, the spring candle development by the amount of needles that you, that you keep in that space. So the more needles you remove, the weaker the candle extension will be, and the more candles, that, uh, more needles you leave, obviously the so stronger. So if you're trying to uh, strengthen weak areas, you want to leave more needles. If you're trying to weaken uh, certain areas, you want to remove more needles. So we're going to, in this area, which is the, a part of the apex, I'm going to reduce this down to, let's say, uh, six pairs of needles. And then in the lower areas, the lower branches or other weak branches, I'm going to leave eight pairs of needles. So this section now has been completed. So I've reduced, there was a branch that was growing out of the bottom here, which I removed and um, keeping two branchlets uh, that were better positioned, that were horizontally orientated, so I kept those and uh, removed the one that was growing to the bottom and then I've reduced the number of needles and I, try, and I did that in a sort of uniform kind of fashion, so all the way around, so I didn't just remove everything from the bottom and keep everything at the top, I tried to, to clean it all the way around, working from the back of the branch towards the front, to the bud, the bud, this, this is the bud that is going to develop in spring. A good approach uh, which will help you, especially when you have trees that are uh, starting to become a little bit more dense, uh, it's easy to lose your way inside the tree and so it's best to choose, as I said earlier, uh, work from the top of the tree to the bottom of the tree but over and above that work on a, a branch. So follow, so look at the trunk and then work out, um, well from the top to the bottom of the tree taking branch by branch and then work on a, finish a branch and then move to the next branch. I've now completed the upper portion of the tree and I'm moving on to the lower branches. So in the lower branches uh, with pines being apically dominant this means that the strongest portions uh, or regions of the tree is always going to be the apex um, because that's getting the most sunlight. So you need to control that more than you do the lower part of the tree, um, which means, or this, is ex this explains why in this area we reduced uh, down to fewer needles than what I'm going to be doing here. So in the, on the lower branches, I'm going to be looking at increasing the amount of needles that I keep, and that's gonna be eight to 10 pairs of needles and in um, weak branches on the interior of the tree I wouldn't remove any of those needles because you're trying to strengthen it. Um, something that I forgot or just haven't said yet, um, the, the timing of this work is in autumn 
And the reason why we do it in autumn is because, well, for several reasons actually, uh, one of the reasons is that the needles have now reached a point where they've hardened off enough. When they are very soft uh, earlier in the season, if you've decandled as well, um, then, then it would be probably a few weeks ago, in fact, that these needles would have hardened off, or maybe a little bit longer, um, but they bend very easily. And so you'll see those characteristic brown um, marks if you've worked on the tree wiring or some other work that you've done on the tree um, then maybe you would have seen those 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 brown um, marks and that's from where the needle is actually being kinked it's not a fungal problem um, so the reason for doing the work now is that the needles have hardened off the other reason for the work is it's uh, preparing the tree for winter, which is typically when the tree would be wired. Uh, so the next step is uh, is probably going to be wiring, um, which will be done during winter when sap flow is at its lowest. Um, and then also the reason why we do this work now is, um, and, and it's not the only time, this is, this is one of the times to do the work. Um, the next point, it just so long, provided you do it before spring, um, that would be the absolute latest, but this is optimal because what's happening now is that the tree is putting out, um, it's, it's sending energy to the various portions of the tree to form the buds, the spring buds that will be developing into your spring candles in, in the following growing season. So if you want for this energy distribution that we're trying to achieve, and that is even uh, needle uh, or even candle and therefore even needle uh, length around the tree, it's important to balance the energy of the tree now so that the amount of buds that are developing around the tree is going to be more or less even and the strength of those buds will also be roughly the same. So it's important to do the work now but if you can't get to the work now the next uh, best time or well, the next best time yes would be in winter and the last opportunity you'll have will be early spring but by then of course it stands to reason that the buds would have already been developed but um, if you have fewer needles there those buds won't develop um, so they are maybe look bigger visually when you look at them but they're not going to develop very strong very much stronger than other areas if you are reducing the amount of needles before those buds actually start to develop as candles so as I said the next step will be to go into the lower branches and reduce the needles but keeping a little bit more than the top part of the tree, the apex. The needle thinning is now completed and uh, now I'm going to address the moss that's developing on the trunk. This is perfectly natural uh, when you have a canopy that's full like this and it's uh, sh um, shading the lower region, the trunk of the tree, you will get moss uh, developing. So it's perfectly normal. The only thing that is that you need to um, not neglect uh, controlling it because otherwise that uh, bark is going to rot. So although you can go through uh, and, and just sort of uh, scratch off the moss with the uh, various uh, implements, the best is actually to kill it with a, un I'm going to be using undiluted vinegar. I uh, don't really think it matters which vinegar, um, if you're using grape vinegar or apple cider vinegar, I don't know, but uh, I think I'm using grape vinegar, but it's undiluted and you're not going to drench the tree in the vinegar, you're just going to spray it onto the moss. That um, incredible reduction on pH value, being acidic, will kill the moss and then once the moss has died and it has dried you can then very easily remove it and then just uh, and then um, the, the, the trunk is safe again until the moss grows back and then which you you will obviously just need to keep on repeating the process so when you're spraying the moss it's important that you don't as i say drench the tree um, because i don't think this will be very good for mycorrhiza either um, but you want to make sure that you're getting all the moss moist um, and you can spray uh, a fair amount of the tree uh, trunk as well because this the whole area is going to be uh, starting to green up with mosses um, 
and it's typical of this time of the year at autumn when we starting the temperature so coming down it's not so hot and we're getting more and more moisture in the air so it's typical that this sort of growth will occur that completes the work on this pine and um, I hope that some of the techniques that I demonstrated to you is helpful to you. This pine will now go back out uh, outside and keeping it in as much sun as I possibly can, uh, which is something that you need to watch out for now as the sun is uh, getting lower on the horizon. So you might find that shadows start uh, being cast on your trees from houses uh, or your house or the wall or other obstacles or other items. Um, so just make sure that you move your trees around uh, accordingly. I will uh, put some fresh fertilizer on it now as well. Uh, it's a very important time to fertilize your pines because this enables them to store up the nutrients that, they, that they're um, going to need when they push in the spring. The vinegar will now work on that moss and probably in a you know it'll kill it essentially instantly but I'm going to wait uh, for it to dry out and then I'm going to physically remove it uh, probably with a little ginning tool or some other kind of blunt implement uh, trying to not damage the bark in any way at the same time but other than that uh, it's just normal daily uh, maintenance and uh, I'll be watching the the um, fungus um, I noticed that the is no uh, sign of fungus on the new ne needles, um, the ones that grew post uh, summer decandling. Uh, so that is under control, but I did spray uh, this past weekend um, with a fungicide, and uh, that is something that one should do with pines uh, on a regular basis, very uh, ideally once a month, uh, but there are uh, very important uh, uh, times when you should uh, spray with a fungicide, and that is when the new needles are, uh, when the candles are starting to emerge, and, uh, and then also during the period while the needles, uh, spring or summer needles, are still soft uh, before they harden off, um, because this is when they're most susceptible to uh, fungal attack. Otherwise, I think that about covers it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this short video and I hope to see you again. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, then you'll be notified um, when, we, when I release uh, new videos which I try to do every Friday. Thanks very much for watching and until next time take care. Goodbye.